So we are continuing on in our series, Waging Peace, today, and I'm reminded of a prayer that we have used in this church on a few occasions. We've, I've actually made you say it with me, so it might sound familiar to you. We've used a prayer by St. Francis of Assisi, of, of Assisi, and it begins like this, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. You've heard that before? It's a great prayer, and you can look up the whole prayer. It's the prayer of peace by St. Francis of Assisi. And as we are in the series about waging peace, what we're trying to do is we are trying to actively bring peace into the world. So we put on the armor of God. We're using that passage from Ephesians, the armor of God, to help clothe ourselves or adorn ourselves so that we can go and, and bring peace into the world or, or fight for peace because we say that peace is worth fighting for. And if you're like me, if you get a mission like that, you, you really want to jump right in, don't you? I, I, I want to jump right in because sometimes I think we come to church or we, we come to groups and we spend a lot of time talking about it. And it's like, okay, eventually you have to get out into the world and start doing it. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I want to build a foundation for us from which peace can flow. So there's this great spiritual teacher, uh, he, his name is uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, and he says this, he says, you cannot be an instrument of peace if you have no peace within yourself. In other words, you can't give something you don't have. And today we're going to talk about the inner peace that we can have, what our faith has to say about that, even in a really, really chaotic world. So... If you look at our world and you, and you look at this idea of peace, well, uh, the opposite of peace is chaos or conflict or ter turmoil or tension that we would feel in our lives. And it's all around us. Where there is conflict, we cannot find rest for our souls. Or in other words, we can't actually come to a place of peace when we're sitting and living in conflict. It, it at least makes it really difficult because the enemy of, of of peace is conflict. So the question becomes, how is it that you and I can have peace, especially when you see the evidence all around us? Look at, the, look at the wars that are happening in our world. And I know that they're happening on, on other continents. So you think about Israel and um, what's happening in the Middle East. You think about Ukraine and Russia. And one strategy to approach those things is to bury your head in the sand and pretend like it doesn't really affect us, or at least it doesn't affect us directly, so I can just go on about my day. But I don't think that's really what God would want us to do. God, God cares about those people and those things happening in our world, and we should too. At the same time, we have to figure out how do we live in that world and come to a place of peace. So how do we care about something but also not like be consumed by it? And the truth is, for us, it's, it's more than just the big things like that that are happening in the world. It's even the stuff that's happening in, in your world. Just, just the little things that, that might distract you uh, from finding peace. Could be a relationship thing. Could just be like you can't sit still long enough to just be in the presence of God because you're always moving and thinking about the next thing. Can I ask you a, a serious question? When's the last time, when's the last time you've just been able to sit still and be in God's presence? If you're wired like me, everyone's wired a little differently. Some can do this so well. I feel like I move a mile a minute, or at least my mind does. And as soon as I try to sit and breathe and meditate or pray, I will begin thinking about, okay, well, but there's this task I got to do. Oh, I read this one thing in Scripture. That was really cool. <laughs> wonder how I could preach on that or something. Oh, man, I got a little ache or pain in my body somewhere. Your mind goes that direction. I came across this. It was a, it was a meditation for kids uh, with uh, the Kung Fu Panda, if you know this character. <laughs> and I have to tell you, it hit way too close to home. So... The, the panda, like his issue is food. That's what he, he goes to. So he's sitting here under a tree and he's trying to find inner peace. And this is what he's speaking to himself. He's saying, inner, inner peace, inner peace. 
And then his mind shifts and he goes to dinner, please. <laughs> and then dinner with, with peas. <laughs> and before long, his whole, I mean, the, the whole purpose of him sitting and trying to find rest is it's, it's gone. And I'm like, boy, I relate to that. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how we can have peace in a, in a world that ha has turmoil or conflict or chaos. And it doesn't even have to be the big things. It can be the little things too. The, the reality for us is we live in the in-between. When you look at our, our scripture, it tells us the beginning of the story and it tells us the end. So the beginning is we are in the Garden of Eden. We are in paradise with God. Humanity is. Adam and Eve are representing humanity. They really represent you and I. But when they leave that place, now they're in this kind of, this anxious middle. And that's where we're at today. And we long for or we await for that Garden of Eden to be restored. So if you read in the book of Revelation at the very end, you will see this, this beautiful picture of the Garden of Eden being restored, being, being made again. And we live in that har harmony and peace with God. That's where, where all of this is headed. So the story of God is one that is willing all of creation to restoration and peace in God's presence. That's where this is going. But we live in the anxious middle. So how do we find peace now, in this time and place, in the moment in which we await that to occur? And if peace is worth fighting for, and we believe it is, then what I want you to know is your peace now, here and now, is worth fighting for. And it's possible. But this is not something that you and I can just create or manufacture on our own. You can't just try harder to find peace. It does not work that way. The peace that God wants to offer us, is it's given to us. So I, there's a scripture that I, I really... Uh, adore, and I go to it often in a time of need. It's from Philippians chapter 4. It says this. It says, then God will give you peace, a peace which is too wonderful to understand. That peace will keep your hearts and minds safe as you trust in Christ Jesus. Here, my brothers and sisters, are some things I want you to think about. Think about things that are true, honest, bright, clean, and pure. Things that are lovely and things that are good to talk about. If they are good and they bring praise to God, think about these things. It's really about training your mind. I taught you and you learned things from me. You heard things I said and you saw things I did. Do these same things yourselves. Then God who gives peace will be with you. So I will go to the scripture in times of need. I've, I've sat with people by. Uh, who are in the hospital and read the scripture. I've sat with people who've lost a loved one and read the scripture because it, it talks about the promise of God and that is peace even in a situation that is going to be, cha is challenging. And it talks about peace, that, that peace is possible. The reason why it is possible is because it comes to us from God. We can't, we can't really earn it ourselves or try for it ourselves. It's just given to us and, and, when you think about coming to a church and you think about the, the tasks that sometimes we have to do, sometimes you'll, you'll hear a pastor say, you've got to read your Bible more. You've got to pray more. This is not one of those things. It's just like receive the peace of God. It's not another thing that you have to put on your to-do list. And this, this overlaps with what we're talking about when it comes to the armor of God. Because if you picked up on some of these words, it talks about uh, keep your hearts and minds safe as you trust in Jesus, think about what is true. And automatically, my mind goes to a couple pieces of the armor, which we're going to focus on today. And that comes from Ephesians 6, verse 14. It says, Stand therefore, fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the bre breastplate of righteousness. So when you think about the belt of truth, the, the belt is what holds all the armor together. You have to have your belt to keep your armor together. And we can find peace in the truth that God tells us, that the scriptures uh, reveal to us. So in, in John 8, Jesus says this. He says, 
uh, to the Jews who believed in him. He said, you are truly my disciples. If you remain faithful to my teaching, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So if we want to access truth or we're going to put on the belt of truth, what we're saying is we want to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and follow his teaching. And when we do that, we will feel free or light. So freedom is a symptom of peace. Freedom is like the overflow of of peace. When we are free, we, we are liberated. And God has given us that peace. So if you want to know, okay, what is the truth? What are the things that Jesus teaches us about God? Well, here's one. The truth is that God is in control. And Jesus has already done the heavy, lifty, heavy lifting for us. If you have ever felt yourself in a situation and you've been wondering, yeah, I don't know where this is headed. I'm a little bit worried or anxious about the outcome. That's like me when I watch every Chiefs game. Then <laughs> what, what Jesus tells us is that in the end, there's going to be a restoration here. In the end, in finality, you will come to peace. It may not happen instantaneously or in that exact moment, but it's going to be okay in the end because God is in control. Jesus tells us in Matthew, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That word for rest is often another word for, for peace in Scripture. So we will say Shabbat Shalom, or, or people will say Shabbat Shalom in, in synagogue, and what they mean is Sabbath rest or Sabbath peace. I hope you can find rest for your weary life. And we can do that because we know that in the end, God is in control. Here's the second one. Tru the truth is, is that God offers us unconditional love. And the reason why that matters so much is because, yes, we will make mistakes. Or here's another way to put it. Yes, we will sin. And when that occurs, we'll, we'll harm ourselves or our relationship with God or our relationship with others. We will be sinned against. People will hurt us. But no matter what occurs in this world, no matter what happens, that love of God, this unconditional love, is never withdrawn. It's not dangled out here like a carrot. It remains for you. It's always available. And when you know that, you know that we are no longer in sin or the pain of the world. We are, we are children of grace. And that is freeing. That is liberating. And here's the, the last one I want to communicate is that the truth is God is a sanctuary. Which means that God is a place that we can, we can go and feel safe. It's a refuge for us. In Psalm 46, it's, it says this. Um, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a help always near in times of great trouble. That's why we won't be afraid when the world falls apart. Does anyone here feel like the world at times is falling apart? That's why we won't be afraid that the world is falling apart because God is a place of safety which, in which we can go and which we can borrow strength. So when the mountains crumble into the center of the sea, when the waters roar and rage, and we've felt that with the hurricanes here recently in our world, when the mountains shake, it's... Uh, be or when it's waters roar and rage, when the mountains shake because of its surging waves, we don't have to be afraid. So we can go without if we have to. Sometimes we feel like we need something or want something, but we can go without or we can go with less because, because God's love and God's reign and God's control and God's refuge, that endures. So we can persevere and make it through a lot of hard things because what we know fundamentally is that the, in the end, it's all going to be okay. That's what we know. And that's what we believe. And that's what we try to embody when it comes to inner peace. Now the breastplate, the breastplate is interesting because what it does is it protects. It, it guards your vital organs. You put a breastplate on your body and it protects you from any, any blows that would uh, could potentially be lethal. Most importantly, it protects your heart. And I thought about this scripture, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. And the heart being like the soul. So the way to protect the heart, sometimes in church, I think we read that, that verse from Proverbs and we say, well, that just means like don't listen to, to songs with dirty lyrics in them or don't watch like Harry Potter. You know, it's like avoid <laughs> sinners or something. Or sin and that is not how I read that at all. I think 
when you look at the life of Jesus, he went out into the world, he encountered everyone and everything, and he was always waging peace. He was always trying to bring peace to people. So the point is, is that we want to clothe ourselves in righteousness. And you see that in this scripture from Philippians. Whatever is honest, right, lovely, true, whatever those things are, keep those things close to your heart because that will help you go out into the world and wage peace. Now, another name for, for the breastplate of righteousness is justice. That word gets translated both ways sometimes. And so we keep the righteousness of God close to us, but we go out into the world and we see people. Maybe they're marginalized. Maybe they're oppressed. Maybe they're hurting. Whatever it is, we do the work to try to help set things right. That's what we do when we wage peace. Um, so trying to put all of this together, the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness, if we put these things on, how do we know we're doing it right? Or how do we know we can be at peace? And I, I started thinking about things this week, like when is, the, when is the time in my life I felt most at peace? And I'll throw that question to you. When is the time in your life where you have felt most at peace? For me, it is it's when I am playing music or listening to music, I will, I will do this prayerful thing where I'll put my headphones in or, or just I'll blare music and listen to it. I kind of get lost in it. I've talked with a number of people who've said, well, I, I really, you know, I can find rest when I'm doing yard work. That's not that for me, but I'm glad <laughs> it is for you. Or when you're, maybe you're working on something in the garage or maybe you get lost in nature. I've heard someone, uh, for someone recently, they were like, you know what, it just felt, felt right whenever I was out helping people and serve people. I just felt this sense of peace. And I think the reason why that is is because those things take our focus and attention and they pull us into the present moment. It's just me here with God. And when we put on that breastplate of righteousness, what it's telling us to do is we are keeping those things close to our heart. We are keeping God's present close to our heart because here's, here's what we cannot do. We can't control the future. We can't control the past. All we can do is, is control the present moment. And when we get drawn to that place, whew, some of these other worries melt away. The other thing that I think that these things can do is they give us a little bit of perspective and maybe even a longer range perspective. So we can see, you know what, there are things in life that give me meaning. There are things in life that are worth living for. And it gives us this sort of hopefulness, you know, that again, in the end, everything's going to be okay. So when we believe in the truths of God, what we get is we get this, what I'm calling it's a defiant hopefulness. When the world say, no, 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 it's, it tells us it's falling apart, God tells us, no, you can be hopeful. So it's a defiant hopefulness, it's a stubborn hopefulness, it's a rebellious hopefulness that we project in our lives in that we know it doesn't always have to be this way. It will get better. So I was thinking this week, and this was what I want to close with, about what's been happening with the hurricanes. And I came across this story, it was from a man named Gary who lived in Asheville, North Carolina. And this guy has been through a lot. He, so not, I mean, he's going through this hurricane, but he was a Vietnam veteran. Think about the horrors you would see in war and the horrors of that war. He also had lung cancer. So he's, he's living with lung cancer. And because the storm came in, it, it cluttered up the street so that he couldn't leave his home. But through all of that, he was able to keep this optimistic outlook and he, he basically said, you know what? I know that we're going to be okay because we have great people and great neighbors around, around me. Uh, so much so that, get this, he, one of his neighbors uh, is in a similar situation. They're both on oxygen. And so he was sharing his oxygen with his neighbor. And I really think you can only do that, right, when you're, you're at peace with the situation that you find yourself in. And you really believe, you really believe that no matter the devastation you see in the world, that we're all going to be okay. And when you have that, you really can find that, that inner peace. Let's pray. God, I pray, I pray for, for every heart that is in this room today and, and every heart that is a part of this worship service, even if they're not here in this physical space, myself included, I pray that you would offer whatever it is that we need to help find that voice of inner peace. Maybe it's a song, maybe it's a scripture, maybe it's a word that was spoken. 
Maybe it's a person who comes alongside us. God, show up in our lives in a real and tangible way and let us harness the power of your peace for our lives to to be at peace in a world that is so anxious and so chaotic and so warring. May we embody your peace. May we receive your peace. At this present moment, let us find our hope and strength in you. God, we lift all these things up and more, and we ask them all in the name of your Son, Jesus. And everyone here says, Amen.